Greetings, it's Maxo Diddley, and today I am going to be showing you how to quickly convert a video file to a sequence of PNGs, where you have a PNG image for each frame of the video. So, let's get right into it. So, we're going to be using the MoviePy Python library. You're going to need to do a pip install MoviePy to use this library in your Python project. But basically, MoviePy gives so many useful video handling uh, functions for us to use, and so we're going to be using it. We'll also be importing OS because it's quite handy. Next, we are going to create a function. We're going to do def extract frames movie times and im dear. So this line is defining a function. We're going to call it extract frames because we're basically extracting the frames from the video. And this function is going to take in three arguments. Movie is going to be the path to the video file. Times is a list of the times at which to extract frames. And imdir is a directory where we want our extracted frames or PNGs to be saved. After that, we are going to do if not os.path.exists imgdir os.makedirs imgdir. I need to do better variable names. But basically, these lines check if the directory specified by ingdir exists. If it doesn't exist, we create it using the os.makedirs function. Basically, this ensures there's always going to be a folder for our PNGs. After that, we've got a bit of code, but don't worry, we're going to break it down. So we're going to do clip equals video file clip movie. This line creates a new video file clip object that represents the video file specified by the movie variable and then we can interact with the video file and then extract the frames from it. So then we're going to do 40 in times and this is going to start a loop that iterates over each time in the times list and then we're going to do ing path equals os.path.join ing de fancy little curly brackets dot png dot format int t timesclip.fps. So this line creates the path where the extracted frame is going to be saved. It's combining the ingdir path with a new file name, which is generated by taking the current time t, multiplying it by the frames per second, which we can get by doing clip fps, to make a frame number, and then converting it to an integer and a string, and the result is a file name. For instance, it might be like 0.png or 1.png. And obviously we do ingdir as the first parameter before the comma because we want to put this in the folder for our PNGs. I'm really regretted this uh, variable name now. It's so awkward to say. Then we're going to do clip.save underscore frame ingpath and t. So this line ex actually does the extracting of the frame from the clip at the time t and saves it to the file specified by our ing path variable that we specified before. And that's basically it for the function, but we do need to call the function and we'll go over a few little other things as we do so. So we've got three variables. So movie, that's just going to be the file path of the video that we want to extract the frames from. We've got big time villain because that's one of my favorite scenes from any video game. Then we've got the ing imgdir directory which is dot slash pngs so it's basically basically going to be a folder called pngs then we're going to do clip video file clip movie so for those of you who have been looking at the code a bit you might be thinking max why are we making a video clip here we're going to be creating one inside the function and i'm going to give you two responses firstly you could probably just pass this in into the function i'm not going to though because i'm lazy but you could to improve the code. But secondly, we actually want to get for a reference to the video to calculate the time, which you'll see in a second. So this looks a bit complicated, but it's a bit simpler than it looks. Basically, this is the times variable. You've probably been wondering about it since we started this, this tutorial. But basically, this line creates a list of times at which to extract frames. It's using a list comprehension to create a list of numbers from zero to the number of frames in the video. Each number is divided by the frames per second to convert it from a frame number to a time in seconds. 
And this is calculated by multiplying the frame rate of the video, which is clip.fps, by the duration of the video in seconds, which is clip duration, and this gives you a total number of frames in the video, since the frame rate is the number of frames per second. And this is converted to an integer and used as an endpoint for the range function. So, if your video has a frame rate of 30 frames per second that lasts 10 seconds, this part will generate a sequence of numbers from 0 to 300, but not including 300. Next, each number in the sequence, which is going to be represented by i, is divided by the frame rate, clip.fps. This converts the frame number back into a time in seconds. So if your frame rate is 30 frames per second, the first few numbers in the times list would be 0 out of 30, 1 out of 30, 2 out of 30, and so on. These represent times in seconds at which to extract frames from the videos. And at the end of all this, times is a list of times in seconds that span the entire duration of the video with one time for each frame in the video. And basically, the Pi Movie uh, function is like, okay, so I know at which point in the video to extract an image. And that's basically how the times variable works, and why we use it. And I suppose we probably need to actually call the function we made, so we do extract underscore frames, movie, times, and ing, duh. So with all of that, we're going to hit play. But before we do so, there's two things we should probably go over quickly. If you're in Visual Studio, you can right click on your Python environment, which will be somewhere around here. You can then go to manage Python packages. And then you can type movie pi, and then you can click here to install it. You might need to do a pip install command elsewhere if you're using a different setup for Python, but I'm in Visual Studio and that's what I'm doing. Also in Visual Studio, you can right click on your project, go to open folder in File Explorer, and this is going to be your Python project. My video and folder are right next to the Python files. So we just reference the names for the file paths. You can put them wherever you want, just make sure you get the file path correct. With all of that, we're going to hit save and hit play. So, not much is going to occur. It's going to be a black screen. And this is, the execution time is going to depend a lot on the frame rate of your video and how long it is. But, what if we go into the folder? Well, as you can see, frames are being generated. This might take a moment because this video is a few seconds long. And, as you can see, it's finished. So, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more Python tutorials. Thanks for watching.